that is the connecting piece. But for the for hey, don't go to bed without washing your face. Also moisturize and use a serum or two. Your skin will love you. Go to www.gobeautiful.com for vegan, luxurious skincare. No carcinogens, no parabens, eco-friendly, and your skin will love you for it. Mm, good night. Thank you for tuning in to Betsy's Building Brands podcast. If you're interested in being a guest or having your business advertised on our podcast, please send an email to podcastmanager at bestiesandbiz.com. After the show, don't forget to head over to Facebook and Instagram to subscribe to our page, Besties Building Brands. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Besties Building Brands, the podcast. Um, We have a special show for you guys. We don't have a guest. Um, so we're just going to be bringing you some uh, knowledge from our personal experience and um, based off of what we see from talking to um, different clients that we have. We have myself, Alter Ego, we have Crystal, the connector, and we have Miss Complicated. Um, so make sure you shop Go Beautiful with two L's um, and make sure you're hitting us up at podcast manager at bestiesandbiz.com if you want to be featured on the show. Um, drop your comments and questions um, as we go through the show. We're going to be talking about things that you need to build um, a successful business. Um, so just to start it off, we both agreed that you definitely want to do your research um, when starting a business. Market research is key to finding out um, information about your competitors, information about um, where you want your business to be, location, um, information about if there is even a need for your product or service. Um, You know, you may want to niche down um, to make sure you're not swimming in um, the red ocean and you want to go to the blue ocean. So you don't want to be out there with all the sharks where everybody is. You want to try to put, you know, get into a niche that's a blue ocean where you don't have to fight as much for market space. Um, so that's the first thing we want to talk about is research. Uh, Chris, do you have anything about research? Research also lets you know if there's an opportunity, an opportunity to succeed, also an opportunity to fail. Um, in my in my findings, I feel like uh, I have found that they don't do a lot of research and their research tends to stop at Google, like hair, and then that's it. But they don't think about the, in their area, they don't think about doing the research on their competitors. They tend to, they sort of tend to cringe when you, when I say research. Are you looking at your competitors and what they're doing? It's like, oh no, why would I want to know what they're doing? You want to know what they're doing because you're providing the same service or the same product. So their clients, their customers could potentially be your clients and customers to see what they're saying, to see what works, to see what doesn't work. And I feel like because there's such a um. You know, everyone's on the bandwagon and they tend to they tend to copy mm-hmm. and other people tend to copy what other people are doing. And it's like, oh, my God, she's biting off of me. Oh, my God, he's doing the same thing I'm doing. He must have, you know, that type of thing. When I'm trying to get them to think, you know, constructively and also openly that, no, that is you seeing because you're providing the same service mm-hmm. and you're new at this. So the market research is is key. Pepsi does it with Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever Miss did it with Seven Up or Sprite, whichever one you want to do, you know. And it it, it does help you also uh, with your business and how you want to structure it and how you're going to be successful because you have like the game plan. So and as far as um, from a social media manager point of view, it also gives you content ideas. So if you're looking at somebody else's post and they're selling you know tracks but everybody is saying that they feel like they need the tracks to be thicker you can make sure that the tracks that you provide are thick and that's your point of difference so when you're doing your ads and you're doing your posts that's all you're going to keep talking about about how thick these tracks are and and how long lasting so whatever the competitor is missing or the complaints like if you see people on there saying i ordered three weeks ago and nobody's ever responded to me well you know that 
maybe I'll put a chat feature on my website so that if there's an issue, they can talk to me right away and mm -hmm. therefore they, they won't have that complaint about me. Um, that kind of goes back to what I was saying about the red ocean and the blue ocean. Like it's a lot of people that are selling lip glosses and you see all the people with the boutique. So if you really want to get in that lane, you have to do something different. And the best way to find something different is to see what people are complaining about, about your competitors. So it's really key to look that up. And one tip I'll give, um, a lot of people don't know that you can go to Facebook ads library and you can look at ads from your competitors and you can see all the ads that they run, what their ad copy looks like, what the pictures they're using looks like, what their graphics look like, and then not necessarily the copy, but you can kind of see what works, what doesn't work, you know, who's commenting, what our people are saying. So that's one tip right there. Um, huh? I said, that's a nice feature. That's something I didn't even know about. A lot Ads of people don't mean. know. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. I can um, see that. And then... The next thing I have is um, just getting organized and that ties into um, keeping detailed mm -hmm. records. So making sure, sure that you're organized, you're keeping your receipts together, you're keeping your customer information together. Um, you know, you're keeping your income together, how much you're spending, how much is going on, how much is coming in, because it may not seem that important right now, but when tax time comes, <laughs> you don't want to be jammed up. Um, and Crystal is our... Uh, She's a tax expert as well. So she can, <laughs> so she can talk about that too. She uses that expert loosely. It's like S <laughs> expert with an S. And you're absolutely right. When I'm doing, you know, it's tax season, it's still tax season for those who are, you know, slow to pull the trigger on the taxes. And when I helped a couple of people with their tax as far as their business. Because like, this year was a great year, I, I would say, as far as taxes and getting the tax credit and getting the um, getting I wouldn't necessarily getting the money back that we probably wouldn't that you didn't necessarily didn't make, especially because of COVID. And a lot of people didn't have their paperwork together. They and when I say paperwork, they were not sure as to how much they made, how much they spent. It was always oh, it was always an estimate. I think I spent around such and such on inventory. I think I spent, but the one thing they were clear about was how much rent they paid. <laughs> <laughs> but when it came to inventory and I had to tell them like, when you were, when you, you know, you want to do your schedule C for your business, you want those numbers to, to jive. You want them to, to the last thing you want is for uncle Sam to come back and be like, Hey, alter ego. Um, so you said you did what now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if the numbers and that's the, that's the one thing that always pulls the red flag when the, when the numbers don't make sense mm -hmm. and having your paperwork together is key i don't care if you use the grocery store bag throw all of your receipts in there you can mm -hmm. figure it out at the end of the year but throw everything in there because and when we're in business we spend so much money me included we spend so much money on shipping on packaging on product that it gets you we're so used to spending out that we're not really keeping track of it and not keeping track of it is what could hurt your business because you feel like oh i'm not making any money when here it is you're not making any money because you're spending all of this money unnecessarily and if you're going to have a business you want to run it like a business so you have to keep up with your numbers they even have apps where you can take a picture of your receipt where you mm -hmm. get it and it'll track all that for you. That way you're not jammed up trying to keep the paper receipts. Like, again, if you want to run a business and you want to start a business, make sure you're running it um, like a business. Um, and a lot of my tips are more about, you know, mindset. Um, so my next one is not really about mindset, but I just say be creative. Um, I'm big on being creative and having a point of difference and not just doing the exact same thing. Or if you have to, because you do hair and everybody else is doing here, at least pick a niche, you know, be creative, um, try to do something different or specialize in something um, different. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to do braids, locks, weaves, color, barber cuts. You don't have to do everything and you could be successful picking one niche. And if you're not a very creative person and you don't think you could come up with innovative things and styles, hire somebody. Same thing with sales. Like if you aren't comfortable with actually going out there and say, hey, you know, 
I got that oil. I got them oils, you know, two for five, two for five. Like if you're scared to do that and you're not comfortable <laughs> doing that, you can pay somebody to do it. Because I know sometimes, you know, everybody's not going to want to do that. Everybody's not going to want to stand on the corner with, with a bag full of socks like I got them socks. You feel me? So if you're scared to do that you, and you want to eat, you want your family to eat, you need to find somebody that's going to do it. <laughs> we said the oil boy. There's this guy that walked or I, I I believe he probably he probably's on broad and eerie, but he he walks around and if he sees you outside, he plays like, sis. Next thing you know, your arm is covered in oil. You're like, what? What is it? Smell that. Smell that. That's an Egyptian goddess right there. She for five. I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, he got to eat. His right. family got to eat. So but I'm sleeping I mean, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them though. I hate them like they're too aggressive but I'm just saying you know you have to if you are scared to be that person and you're scared to to make a sell um maybe rethink being a business because even if you're an introvert you still have to let people know that you have a business like if right. you're not going to talk to anybody nobody's going to buy from you if nobody knows that you're selling anything you can't just put a, a table up and just stand there and people walk by your table like you got to be two for five two for five I got them socks. I got them socks. I got that oil. I got the oils. The oils. You got to do that or else nobody's going to know. Same thing with social media. You put up a post and you wonder why you're not making no sell. Just because you put up a post, half the people don't even see it. So right. you're just putting a post and you're wondering not why you're not getting no sales. You have to actually talk to people. Talk to people on their posts. Talk to people when they um, you know, comment under your post so that people can know what the heck you're doing. Also, That's you know, stay focused. Go ahead. What do you want to say? I said that'd be me. I'm 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 the drive by I'm the drive by poster. I will post and be gone, and then be like, yeah, you gotta you gotta talk to people. The whole point of social media is being social. You can't be like, yo, what's up? What y'all doing today? And everybody like, I ain't doing nothing. I'm chilling. What you doing? Or well, everybody else, what you doing today? What you doing today? And you don't never come back and say anything. It's like, mm, that's not really being social. Like, you got to get on there. You got to talk to people. And again, if you don't want to do that, you can hire people to do that too. You can hire people to be on your page and talk to people. I know people are always against DM and DMs and cold calling and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell you something. I come from a cold calling background and it works. It, it freaking works. Like you may not, you know, think it's the best um, strategy. There's a lot of other ones. Cold calling works. And so does sending people messages. But if you're commenting and you're talking to people on your social media page, it's not necessarily a cold DM because you're talking to them. You've been talking to them for a couple of weeks now. You've been commenting on their posts and, and so on and so forth. Back and forth. So when you hit them up in a DM, it's not necessarily a cold one, but trust me, I worked in call centers where I've made like 150 calls and got three people to say yes. And I was fine with it, but those three people may have been, you know, $100 sell. So I'm saying, right. all I'm trying to say is don't be scared, be creative, put yourself out there. And if you are scared, hire somebody to do it. Because if you're not telling anybody that you have a business, it won't grow. Right. Um, um, provide great service, customer service. So that's a big deal um, because I think a lot of people leave out customer service when it comes to starting a business, growing a business. Um, I know they say the customer is always right, which I don't necessarily agree with, but people don't actually have a customer service program, protocol, anything in place. Um, so what do you do when a customer is angry? The customer is upset because their package came and their bottle was broken what do you do if you told the customer it takes seven to ten days and we see with COVID what's happening it's taken three four weeks what do you do how do you handle it yeah are you, like are you going to get mad because the customer is disgruntled the customer is cussing at you or are you want to cuss bad? like what do you want to do how are you going to handle it you need to have some type of customer service protocol in place to handle customer complaints so that your brand it's still stay intact. Right. Hey, ladies, so how do you get them to engage on your post? <clears throat> so, um, go ahead. You can ask questions. You can ask questions and when they're engaging them on your post. Um, if you see what I do, and um, it works a lot when someone likes my post but does not comment, 
I comment and tag them like, hey, um, Olivia, thanks for liking my post. Cause then they're like, oh, she's seen me. Oh, she's seen me. She's seen that I like it. Oh, okay. Or if you're asking a question on your post, as far as, you know, like my one post was like, what's for dinner? They liked it, they didn't answer, answer the post. You can, I do that also. It's like, hey, thanks for liking my post. What did you have for dinner? That's how you put them to, for me, that's how I get people to engage in, in my posts. Um, <clears throat> and just um, for engagement period, asking questions is good, um, but it's really about knowing your audience. So for me, I have like 4,000 Facebook friends, right? But you know, you only see a certain amount of the people anyway. So I really take my time and try to remember or get to know certain people, the kind of things that they like, what they're doing so that I can post things that they're going to comment on. So I know I have a whole lot of hairstylists on my page because that's what I do. So if I post anything hair related, they're going to comment, they're going to like it, they're going to share it. Um, it's really about knowing your audience um, and then knowing human behavior too. People like to talk about themselves. They do. People think, you know, a lot of people think they're know-it-alls. A lot of people think they have all the answers. Now, I'm not trying to be funny, but it's true. So based off of that alone, if you ask them to post the selfie, trust me, you're going to get tons and tons of selfies because people want to show off their selfies. If you ask them, post a picture of what you have for dinner and people think that they can cook, they're going to post the picture, period. That's just, so it's about knowing who's on your page. Seriously, like if you know that um, you have a lot of single moms, you could post stuff about baby daddies. Now, I'm saying this is to get people to engage. And then it also depends on your brand, what you're selling. So, um, you know, you wanna make sure that you're still making sure that you're staying on target with your brand. Mm -hmm. But if you just wanna get engagement, it has to be based off of the people that are on your page. So you have to know them. And the way to know them is to talk to them. So you have to be on their page as well. You have to see what they're posting. So I do take time to do that. So if you see what other people are posting on their page, then you will know the kind of things that the people like. So then you can post things. So I know a lot of people um, on my page also just talk about like relationships a lot and like, you know, just clean houses and things like that. So if you say something like, do you make your bed in the morning or not? It's going to blow up because all the people who think that that is so dirty to not make your bed are going to go in there and they're going to say that. And then you're going to have the other people say, what? I never make my bed. You know what I mean? So it's, it's things like that. Or do you put milk in your macaroni and cheese if you have a lot of people who cook? So you're going to have some people saying, what? Ew. So it's really, really about knowing your audience, knowing who you're talking to and putting that call to action at the end of the post. Show me where you're from with a gift, you know, you know, show me your, the last meme that you posted. And the trick is once you do that and you get 100, 200 comments is to then post something about your business because Facebook is going to show it to more people. So the next post, it doesn't necessarily have to be a sales post. But it could just be like, hey, did you know that, um, I don't know, when you drink water, your hair grows faster or something like that because you want to talk about your hair products. So now more people are seeing it and then they may ask you, oh, well, what do you suggest I do with my hair? And then you'll start getting engagement on that post. So the key is to keep the momentum going because if you slow down, you're going to have to do it all over again. So that's the, um, the biggest takeaway I can say for engagement. I don't know who you are. Who is this talking? It just says Facebook user. Um, and then my last thing before Crystal gets into more of the technical aspects of it is um, consistency, which I talk about a lot in discipline. Um, my favorite, favorite, favorite quote is Will Smith when he said, I'm willing to die on a treadmill. Like you will not outwork me, period. If me... And you get on a treadmill, either I'm going to die or you're going to get off first, period. And that's kind of how I operate. Like, nothing's going to stop me from doing the podcast Saturday at 8 o'clock. Outside of me literally physically can't do it. Do it. Nothing's going to stop me from, you know, if I made an appointment for you to get your hair done, I'm there. Um, Crystal, bye. 
because <clears throat> you got too much going on. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you have to be disciplined and you have to be consistent and nobody can help you with that. Me and Chris talk about this a lot. Like, we can't help you be consistent. Like, you have to want to do it. You have to want to do it. If we tell you it's going to take four and a half hours for you to do X, Y, and Z, and you have to do it every Wednesday, and you don't do it, there's no amount of coaching. You can pay $1,500, $2,500 for all the classes, webinars, group coaching, one-on-one coaching that you want to. But if you're not going to get your black stuff up. Black stuff. Okay, and do it. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Like we can't teach you consistency. We can give you tools. Hey, use this scheduling tool. Hey, use this to send your emails out. Schedule everything out. But if you don't actually schedule it, if you don't show up when it's time to show up, if you don't go live, like if Chris, if you have a call with Crystal and she said you need to start going live. And you don't start going live. It's about being dedicated to what it is you said you wanted to do. It's about being a person of your word. Hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z. For, so for the next three months, I'm going to put my head down and I want to do X, Y, and Z. If you don't, you just don't. There's nothing that any business coach can do for you. Like so how do you want it? Period. Faith. Don't <laughs> They say that a lot in the church. I don't go to church. I'm not in church anymore. But, you know, I hear a lot from my, um, my spiritual people that faith with the work is there. You have all the faith you want in the world, but if you're not going to work, it's dead. Pretty much. There's absolutely nothing. So please don't spend another dollar on a class, mm-hmm. another ebook. Anything until you take a minute and say to yourself, am I willing to put the work in? Because I think that's the part that we both agree on that's missing from everything that's going on with this whole training bubble and this webinar and all the disinformation age is the work behind it. Because you can keep going to the seminars and you can keep learning and learning and learning. But if you never implement it, doesn't mean anything, anything at all. So that's my two cents on building a successful business. One, another point I would like to say about your business is have a business plan. I don't care if it's one page, your mm-hmm. business plan is your roadmap to your business. I was um, I was in the Urban Peace Corps a while ago. And when I say a while ago, like 30 years ago. Anyway, <laughs> and we did something called a life map. And the life map, um, you we, we did um sort of like my vision board back here but the life map was about my life what got me what i went through in my life to bring me to the point where i was at now as far as being in the urban peace corps and that is your business plan your business plan is the structure for your business how you're going to run it and how it's going to grow it's the what you are what's your business who are you servicing where are you located at? How are you going to run it? That's a simple, the simplified business plan. And that will help you with your business. And, and your business plan can evolve as, as, as your business evolves. Your business plan can grow as your business grows. And it can, and you, I have three business plans because I'm constantly evolving and growing and the structure that I felt like, oh, I wanted it this way, but then I want I see that you know, after being in business for six months, that's not working. So it's okay for your business plan to change as your business change. But having a business plan is key. It is really key. Also it's very important, super important, making sure that you plan out your marketing strategy, even if it's something simple, like I want to pass out flyers, I want to go to vending events just so you know. And then, like you said, it'll evolve. It'll change as you grow. Now you have money because you're making money. Maybe you can like do an actual marketing campaign where you're creating ads or you're, you know, you have money to do a radio ad or something like that. But it gives you a roadmap and you can measure your growth. You can see where you were 
and where you are now but if you don't have a plan a formal plan and how do you even know where you're going how do you know when you when you're reaching um success and you're making waves and you're you know reaching pivotal marks in your business if you don't have anything written down you're just going off the cuff off the top of your head right and it's great that you mentioned marketing and funding because that also needs to be part of uh, when you're starting your business, where the money is going to come from to buy your inventory, to buy your product, to pay your rent. If you if you have a brick and mortar, um, where your funding is going to come from. Are you going to crowdsource? Are you going to get um, a loan? Are you going to do a fundraiser or are you going to use your credit cards? Or if you're still working your nine to five, what portion of your check is going to fund your business? And that is also key too, when um, for your business, because you'll know where the money is coming from, where it's going out, how much you're going to need, you know, for your for buying your product, how much you're going to need for your expenses. And when I talked about um, brick and mortar, lo- brick and mortar for your business location, you know, are you going to be have a, a physical location or are you going to be online and that plays into your taxes and revenues because you know of course if you have a physical location there are different taxes that you have to pay and different licensing that come into play with that which goes back into your funding and how much money you're going to need for your business um, also another key point is how are you going to structure your business are you going to be a LLC are you going to be a sole proprietor? Are you going to be a nonprofit? Or are you going to be a corporation? That, I think for that one, everyone seems to be going towards, oh, LLC, LLC, not even understanding what it means to have an LLC. Like LLC is to is actually for your protection, right? It protects you from, you know, them suing you, liabilities, and things like that for LLC when some people really could benefit depending on their business as being a sole proprietor or for their business to be a nonprofit. And that goes back into your market research, which ties into your business plan on how you're going to structure your business and knowing what and what goes into that and what it entails having each of those entities. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. A lot of things. <laughs> I wish I knew that. I went in as an LLC, so I wish I knew that information. Um, but LLC ended up being perfect for me. Um, a takeaway for me that I learned is you definitely need a team and not just a yes team. Not someone's going to say, oh, yeah, that's nice. Do it. You need someone who's going to tell you if your product is not good. You need people who are going to tell you, hey, go this direction. Um, a lot of people will just go into business because their friend says, hey, people are doing hair or hey, people are doing nails or there's so many lip glosses just popping up. Don't just do it because someone's telling you yes. Um, definitely have a team of people that are going to be able to tell you when you're wrong, tell you when you're doing wrong, um, and be able to take that criticism. Um, mm-hmm. Because it's a very big part of business because you, you're going to want to know your flaws so that you can fix them. Um, so that's, that's really big for me. And also yeah. know every state is different when it comes to uh, business structure with LLCs and um nonprofits and taxes and everything, but you also need to check with your state because sometimes certain states you have to pay your um, your licensing. Some you have to pay it uh, quarterly, some you have to pay it uh, semi-annually, some are annually. And you also have to factor in that cost of maintaining that business with your LLC or however your, whatever structure that you have it in. Um, your EIN. There was a huge, a huge, EINs are free. You just go to the irs.gov. You can um, either do it online or do the paperwork and mail it in. EIN is free. And people need to understand that your EIN is your social security number for your business. So you know how we're all born and we've got your paperwork and it'll be your security number. That is what your EIN is for your business. Let's the uh, the powers that be know I done birthed the business. Here is the EIN, the social security number of this business. That is what you will need when you are doing legal business because you'll use that to open up your business bank account. You will need your EIN, get your uh, DNB, 
Yeah. Your dance number is at dnb.com. And that is also free. The DNB is what um, gives you your business credit score. And that is where all of your business credit information will be stored at and held at, at DNB. And I think that um, certain people get confused with that because they feel like, oh, I got my social security number. You know, I'm in business. Like, but you, your EIN is actually what you need for your business to say, hey, I'm in business because those are going to be two separate things. And I just want to add on to a lot of people are getting jammed up. A lot of people are just trying to scam with the um, PPP loans. But um, for those who probably got scammed from somebody saying I can get you the money, I just want you to, to keep in mind that um, you want to, even with business credit, you want to make sure you have um, a business email address, not email address, a business address um, and a business phone line. Um, people were using their home address. That's how they were getting jammed up. Um, you know, so again, if you're going to run a business, run it like a business, you can get a virtual mailbox for like 10 bucks. I mean, it may not have all the bells and whistles, but you can pay $9.99 a month. And you have a virtual mailbox that you can use for loans, grant applications, all of that. And you can get a second line for fairly cheap. Um, just something to think about um and that goes back into when you're starting out and you're researching that's something you want to put down and put a number next to it so you can calculate how much you really need to start up that goes into um your business plan and how much funding you're going to need all that all those kind of things so before you just jump into a business you see everybody's doing lashes and they're making so much money um they're not paying taxes on that you know, they're putting it out there so everybody is seeing it. So, you know, people get jealous and, and will try to report you. You know, you want to make sure that your business is legit and is set up legit. And if you don't know how to do it and you don't want to take the time to research it, hire somebody to do it. There are plenty of people that do it. There are people in our group. We have accountants. We have attorneys. We have business consultants. Um, if you're afraid to, to do anything, we have mindset coaches. Um you don't have to be like um miss complicated was saying get a team you don't have to do it by yourself you can get help don't just be out there stranded just jumping into something because you see that everybody is doing it and they're making money because it may not be the same for you right and it's okay not to know certain i don't know everything and no one i don't care who you are you can be the sheldon of the world you do not know everything and mm. it's so with the people who do that is also sets your business up for success sets you up for success because you are attached to people that knows i don't know anything i don't know all the legal stuff but we have lawyers on the team who knows and we can direct you to them um the ppp was was very was very key people are jammed up and like i said in the very beginning when we're doing taxes when the numbers don't make sense you can if you if you do have a home business and you're operating out of your home that can be your that can be your business address right? but the numbers have to make sense right mm -hmm. not be on section eight okay applying for ppp because you have a home business that's legit fraud and people have done that right and again it all has to we're just here to help you build a better business be in business smart and there's a lot of information that is that is out there but they're giving you the short end of it either because there there's there's an ebook involved that they want you to to buy there's a mm -hmm. to buy there's a, a seminar that's coming up they want you to attend to and they just give you the, the the just the crumbs to keep you coming back to keep you coming back to keep you coming back and we just want you to to work smarter to 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 work smart work smarter not harder have your business if you're in business because you want to be in business because you are creating a legacy for your family or you know for yourself and you want to do it legitly then these will help you all this information will help you um, you are i had a question um a couple days ago about um how can i get what was the question? How can I get the um 
the P- I just started my business. How can I get a PPP? And I said, well, the PPP is for people who are already in business, not those that are just starting business. And they're like, well, I need funding. Okay, well, that the PPP is not the way to go. And because they, and that's the, another thing, people aren't reading and they're just half listening. They see and hear people getting approved for $20,000, $40,000 in PPP and think that they can do it too. When no, they were actually been in business before. You had to be in business before 2019 to be mm-hmm. eligible for PPP. And then don't get mad because you weren't approved or if you were approving it for a smaller amount and these loans do have to be paid back. And I just want to say something about that too, real quick. Um, If you're not paying your personal loans, right? I'm just saying, if you're not paying your personal loans, um, I just feel like you shouldn't be trying to get a $450,000 loan from anywhere. You because you have to pay it back. And I just feel <laughs> like it's just so much misinformation going around. Business credit, come to this course on how to get business credit. And they show you how to get the business credit. But if you're not, the reason why you want the business credit, probably because your personal credit is messed up. And don't get me wrong. Everybody comes um, with some issues and some baggage. Everybody doesn't have a perfect credit score. And it's for different reasons. But if you can't pay your personal loans, you have to pay the business loan back. Um, it just doesn't make good sense to me to do that. Um, so just make sure that you're operating with integrity with everything that you do. Um, if you're going to take out a loan, make sure it's, it's with the intention on paying it back. Um, and just again, integrity is big with me. I, you know, I talk about it a lot. And that's with everything that you do. So if you're going to take out a loan, you have to pay it back and read mm-hmm. please read it's all right there for you it's even in the small font size seven down at the bottom read everything the credit has to be paid back in a certain amount of time to include with the ppp they give you a time that you have to sign that promissory note that comes back once you're approved that you have to pay this money back on X amount of days, whatever date it is and the X amount that it is. Now you can get, you can apply for the PPP to be uh, forgiven because it is a forgivable loan. It can be mm-hmm. forgiven. However, it's up to them to decide how much is forgiven. It's, it, can, it could be all of it. It could be part of it. But also refer back to when you signed their promissory note that you agreed to pay back $118 a month at whatever percentage rate it was that starts in, you know, if you got it last year to start here in December. Understand that. Even when you apply, even when you fill out the application and send it back, you're like, hey, you know, I'm still struggling, whatever, whatever the case may be is to apply to be for this loan to be forgiven. They still decide how much and when. But you signed the promissory note was how much you're going to be paying back. Real quickly on the business credit for your business, right? When you are building business credit, you have your EIN, you have your DUNS number, and you start to apply for your net 30 or net 60 accounts. Your net 30 and net 60 account means that that whatever whatever um, you purchase from the businesses which is Quill, um, Grainer, and Uline, that it they give you 30 days to pay the balance, not pay it in small amounts, not like a credit card. They give you 30 days. If it's a net 30 account, they give you 30 days to pay the balance. If it's a net 60, they give you 60 days to pay the balance. And that gets reported back to your DUNS number which will be your Paydex score, which will be your credit, your business credit score. And you want your business credit to remain in between 80 to 100. That is very good. Your business credit is not the same score as your personal credit. So having your net 30 account goes on time for three months will build your business credit score, which will then allow you to go to your business, back to your business bank, your bank account to apply for business credit and they will extend that to you however you have to build it up and it does take time especially if you're just starting out 
And I would say 90 days, 90 to 120 days is when you can go back to your bank and say, hey, I've been building, you know, whatever, whatever your case may be, I would like to apply for a business credit card or a business line of credit. But you have to build it up first, just because I know people are saying, oh, you got an LLC, you can get 250K. Yeah, you can in about a year, but you have to take the steps to do so, which is building up your business credit. And building up your business credit means having business accounts. And for more details on that, you can come to our Bessie's brunch, which will be probably the end of May or June. We'll make sure Crystal gives you guys some either some a presentation on it or some type of booklet or pamphlet or something like that. You can also go to bestiebusiness.org and join our networking group. Um, where we give you tips, tricks once a month. You'll get an ebook, you'll get a newsletter, um, you'll get discounts on vending. Um, if we ask if you wanted to be a permanent Besties vendor, you'll be able to get half off of your vending table if you join the networking group. Um, so we have a lot of things coming down the pike. So I hope you guys took some notes. Crystal was dropping some good gems. Um, if you have any questions, you know, hit us up on facebook um you know gems you know why i was dropping gems why you know dropping gems? because my name is a gem okay crystal <laughs> <laughs> um so bestiesbusiness.org go to the website look at our packages look at our programs Keep um, your eyes and ears open for our brunch that we have coming up. You'll be able to send some sample products, business cards to get into our swag bags to get in front of, um, you know, our the people that are attending the event. If you're not local to us, um, once everything clears up a little bit in the world, we'll be able to start traveling to you guys um, to having brunches in your city. Um, and then make sure you're shopping. Go beautiful with two L's.com. To get that good skincare. Um, and then we have it's complicated.com with the K, where you can um you know create your own style. You don't have to look like everybody else. We're talking about being innovative and be creative, so you can get some creative clothing there. Um, and then I'm gonna let Crystal talk about our fundraiser, which we're gonna keep talking about because it's important. Um, and we need your guys' help to um, raise funds for this fundraiser. Right, so our fundraiser is I for IDEA, Intellectual Disability Employment slash Education Agency for our individuals who have autism, Down syndrome, or mild MR. We are going to partner with, and before I would say this, I would say we want to, and I'm now I changed my language. We are going to partner with local community businesses and larger corporations. So our individuals who have an intellectual disability can be gainfully employed. We are aware and we, it is shown and proven that for our young adults that have um, an intellectual disability, they thrive in environments that are positive. They thrive in environments where they are valued and where they can gain a skill so we need your help in raising the funds so we can open up a facility where they can receive the training from our community members, from the larger corporations, so that they can be employed. All right. And you can find the PayPal donation link on our website, bestiesbusiness.org. Make sure you share this out. Um, make sure you get the word out about what we're doing on our podcast. We're just trying to, um, the ultimate goal is to have the dollar circulate in our community. Um, I just found out it's not even circulating. So at first I was saying we want to keep it circulating longer, but it doesn't even circulate. It stays in our community for about an hour and then it's gone. Um, and then just as a point of reference, the Jewish community, I think it stays for like four days or something like that. So that's absolutely insane. Um, so you want to make sure you're shopping besties businesses. You want to make sure that you're shopping businesses local to your community. I did want to make this point, And people may disagree, but this is how I feel. 
when you are trying to get global customers, that's cool, right? Um, that money's not circulating in our community either, right? So I think you should start local to you in your own country, get your name going across the USA, build your brand that way, let the money circulate within your community, and then you can venture out. If you keep looking at things like, oh, it's a billion, million, trillion people in the world, you don't have to worry about your family and friends. Well, I think you do. I think your family and your friends and your neighbors should be your customers. And I think that is what people are missing. And that's the way you keep the dollar circulating. Everybody talks about Black Wall Street. Well, you know why that worked? Because everybody went to the banks in that neighborhood. And then the people who worked in the banks, they shopped at the bakery in that neighborhood. And the people who made the cakes at the bakery, they went to the cleaners in that neighborhood. And then they went to the supermarket in that neighborhood. They didn't drive out to the county because they didn't want to pay the sugar tax. They shopped in the community. And that's the reason why the community flourished. So I think a lot of people miss the point of Bestie is not to create wealth for me and Crystal and Rajay and Naima is to create wealth for everybody together, collectively, in our communities, collectively, together. So please keep that in mind. Share our message. Check out our page. Come to our brunches and just be a part of something bigger. We are more than a Facebook group. Trust me. Um, and I just hope you guys believe in our mission and we will see. Did you have something you wanted to say, Crystal? As I was going to say that I don't think they understand what it means by the dollar circulating mm -hmm. in, in the community. I don't think they understand that when you are spending your money, it could because, you know, let, some communities are diverse mm -hmm. and, you know, they think, oh, well, I went to the Chinese store and I got me, you know, a chicken, a, a, a cheesesteak egg roll and a Lucy. You mean like that? No, not really, because their money goes outside of the community. They don't give back to the community. They live out in the county and they're taking your money out to the county to pay their taxes out in the county. So when you're talking about circulating the dollar in the black community, so instead of going to the Chinese store, find a local mom and pop shop or find somebody who has a black owned business that is in your community that's paying taxes in your community because the taxes is what makes the community better mm -hmm. so when they see money being spent in the community they invest more money in the in the community and how you can see that happening is that um for when they see that you are going out to the county and out into other neighborhoods and spending your money that is why that neighborhood is getting all of the tax breaks, all of the new playground equipment, all of the new awnings, all of the plants, all of the, their parks are better. Their playgrounds are better. Their schools are better because you're going out there to spend your money. Mm -hmm. All of your money in the, in your community and spending it with black owned businesses who are paying taxes in that black business in that black community then schools will get better grasses will get better awnings will look better mm -hmm. i just yeah i just wanted to bring that up because i think sometimes we're having two different conversations and i'm t i'm speaking for my um, besties in general i think sometimes we have two different conversations so when i say things like well, I think your family and friends should support you. And I think that we should, you know, build up our local businesses. The people always say, well, there's a million people in the world and, you know, you don't have to depend on your family and friends. That's a separate conversation. Like I'm talking about the conversation of group economics, collective work. So, yeah, we know that you can definitely get a sell anywhere. But that's more of like a selfish type of mindset to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you're talking about your one self, I'm talking about everybody together. And just to put it out there, I do understand that, you know, you have to make money in order to be able to help people. So we can't all be broke 
and trying to help everybody. But that's the idea of working together. So you don't necessarily have to go out there to get it. And we can just get the message across that if we all do it together and we work together, that we can do it. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. I'm just going to make sure that we're saying that more so people really understand what we're trying to do. That's the reason um, why I don't really subscribe to that part of it. So I know that if I'm trying to make it so, yeah, I can get it from anywhere. But that's not really what I want to do. So I'm going to post up outside on my car with my oil because I want y'all to buy it. You know what I mean? So thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, share this out, and have a good evening.